all this, you know, talking like this, blah, 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 you know, arm, arm in arm, going off arm in arm. If, if I was uh, Zidane Zidane, and I got Eden Hazard, uh, you know, up against the wall. We really hope you like this video. Just subscribe, like, and click the bell to be notified of more content just like this. Morning, Charlie McCann. Morning, John Richardson. How are we, fellas? Excellent. Thank you, Rob. Very good form. Thank you. Good. Um, an all Champions League, all British Champions League final, Charlie McCann. Um, what did you make of the semi finals this week? Um, I thought Chelsea were outstanding. Uh, sorry, that's not fair, both teams. It's just that you, the, the City game, I felt they were always in control. The Real Madrid game, I thought, really keep them at such arm's length. Um, that Benzema shot in the first half apart, I thought with, they managed the game tremendously well and with no little, uh, no little ability. But two shillings, I'm sorry, this will not, you know, it wouldn't have happened under Frank's watch. And I think, you know, we, we that doesn't mean to say that Frank won't rebound back and become an outstanding, possibly even England manager going forward. But uh, no, I think you, we have to put our, uh, hold our hands up and say Tuchel's been, and the people behind that decision, whether it be Book or Abramovich, uh, very good, very good. And it's going to be a hell of a final. And, you know, they're playing got, um, over the weekend as well. And, uh, you know, they beat them in the FA Cup semi final. So, as you say, to me, it's a toss of a coin. Rico? Well, have we forgotten what's been happening over the last few weeks? Um, if you, UEFA, had any uh, you know what, they should say, right, that's it. This is scrapped. Um, both of you, you know, have, have tried to go down the clandestine route. I'm sorry, you're not playing the Champions League final. And while they're at it, pull Manchester United out of the Europa League one as well. Let, let, let's see whether people are actually genuine about what they've been talking about in the last few weeks. But no, surprise, surprise, money will talk again. TV, UEFA haven't got the nerve to do it. That's what should happen. They should say, right, that's it. Null and void, Champions League, goodbye. I mean, that won't happen, will it? Because we know that won't happen. Of course not, of course not. So what we've had over the last two or three weeks is just complete hot air. All right. They've lost a bit of power, you know, they're not in the, the, the main um, debating chamber, if you like, in the future. But, you know, I, I still feel, uh, you know, really strong about what's happened over the last few weeks. But I think people are starting to forget already. You know, it, it's, it's all let them get on with it. Well, they shouldn't let them get on with it. What happened? They, they were trying to destroy the fabric of English football. And here they are. UEFA got the fantastic opportunity now to... to meet the ultimate punishment. Scrap John, it, it, if you go down that route, then surely Manchester City have to be, um, have the Premier League taken away from them because, of course, the fabric was not only to European football, but English domestic football as well. So, you know, have, if you're going down that route, surely then the Premier League becomes defunct this year or yeah. Premier League title goes to Leicester City or uh, West Ham United. Yeah, well, well, I'd have points deductions, which, which, yeah. which, which has that. I'm, I mean, I, I'm just getting a bit frustrated that we all seem, not us, but, you know, generally, we seem to have forgotten oh, it has. What, what, what's gone on. Oh, that's gone now. That You know, every, everything's... Oh, there's a carpet. It's swept. Yeah. Say, John, oh, no. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I still feel strongly about it. I, I speak to other people who say, oh, I'm not going to watch the Champions League final. It, it, it's two clubs who, who wanted to kick us in the what's it. So, you know, let's not forget this and let, let, let's try and keep this little bit of a campaign going. But as you, as you two boys say, it's not going to happen, is it? Yeah. I, that, but there's no harm in putting it out there. Um, you know, let, let, let's not let this, as you say, Charlie, be swept under the carpet. I mean, it's one of the most serious things that's happened in the last few years. One thing that can't be... Sorry, Charlie, go on. No, one thing that can't be swept under the carpet this week is, is Arsenal last night who I thought were appalling. Uh, and if you'd have told me that they'd have gone out with a whimper against a very, very ordinary Villarreal side, um, 
And also, I'd have had to say 12 months ago, if you'd have said that the loss of Granit Xhaka was fundamental, <laughs> that they had no leaders on that pitch. Uh, I, I was, you know, I've, I've always been an advocate of Mikel Arteta, but the statistics are, you know, for his, um, his Premier League record, and they put a lot of eggs in the Europa, uh, Europa League basket. Uh, but last night was... Uh, William came on as a substitute with about 10 minutes to go. And I felt like going to North London and shaking him. It was as yes. if he didn't know that they were behind. He, he, he went, he waltzed off to take a corner as if I, I, I couldn't get my hand, a head around it whatsoever. Whether he was sulking because he'd only been brought on with 10 minutes to go. Um, but they've sold, they sold, uh, I remember the first game of the season, everybody was saying what an, an outstanding signing he was from Chelsea. Chelsea wouldn't give him two years. He hasn't had a kick since. And he's on what, well, ec, well it, it's irrelevant what he's on. But that, to me, showed a lack of, he was not motivated when he went on that pitch. And that was a poor, people like Odegaard, I'm, I had it up to the hair with Odegaard and people said, Thomas Barty, up to there, useless. Not good for Arsenal Football Club. All the, the, the WhatsApp group with Evertonians was saying, Thomas Barty would be a great signing for us. He's slow, overpaid. Uh, it, it, it was just perfect for our midfield. Um, and that's, that was, I, I was really, really, I didn't watch any of the um, United game. Normally I'm a, I'm a flitter on a Thursday. I didn't because I was, I was, you know, United's game was done and dusted, but that was terrible. That wasn't Arsenal Football Club for me. And for the first time, uh, uh, it was, it was, you know, other Arsenal fans have been telling me that I'd have sort of rose tinted glasses towards what was going on at uh, the Emirates. I was disappointed. Uh, Rico, the, <laughs> the difficulty is, which is, um, which is fair enough when you're talking about. You say we shouldn't be talking about. Well, you basically say we shouldn't be talking about Manchester City and Chelsea. Uh, oh, yeah, I, we, can be, we can be talking about them, but they shouldn't be playing this game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Man in fairness, Manchester United fans. I mean, maybe that's the only thing left. Is is a protest? Is is to say we've had enough of this? You know, we we. But then, as soon you, you know, as a football fan as well, if it was Newcastle going to a Champions League final after it all gone on. A lot, a lot of fans will forgive anything if they're successful, won't they? Yeah, of course they will. Of course they will. But you have to look deeper than that, you know, and, and fans have to look deeper than that. I think a lot of them would because the fabric of the game was, was under threat, wasn't it? Um, and we shouldn't forget that. Um, yeah, I mean, we saw those protests at Old Trafford and, you know, half of it was genuine, you know, real supporters who you know, being appalled by what's been going on and the Glazers, etc. And then, of course, we had the, the others who were, I'm afraid, idiots, you know, hitching onto a, a bandwagon of thuggery, if you like. Mm. I, th I think fans are starting to, to say things. I mean, it's not just that. I think it's an opportunity. I think uh, over the 14 months that we've had with COVID and everything, it, it's taken, it, it's been an opportunity for fans to reflect on what's going on about their game. And I think that, They've been looking at other things as well, the price of tickets, merchandising, etc., kickoff times, blah, blah, blah. And I think it, it's sort of a reality check for football at the moment. And I think fans are now thinking, yes, we have got a voice. You know, all right, you, you don't want the scenes of, of Old Trafford, some of those scenes, but they, ha they have got a voice and they, they're going to be heard. And uh, I think that is good for football. And will the Champions League final be in, held in Istanbul, Rob? John? That was my... That was my, my it will be, question. but yeah, it shouldn't After be. I took the wind out of my sails talking about... Oh, the, uh, I, I, I mean, <laughs> it, there's, another, there's another case in point about uh, um, UEFA. Hmm. How, how, why, why would possibly it be in Istanbul? Can, when the COVID, cases, the COVID cases are so much greater than here. Why, why can't, I, mean, I didn't say play at Prenton Park, but you could play, you could pretty much play anywhere, couldn't you, here? Could somebody knock on UEFA's door and say there's a pandemic, I mean, that's me. pandemic going on in the world? It just it literally that, that is one where I know I know if it was a full house, um, you know they'd have all their uh, the, the the schmoozers and the, the sponsors, sponsors and, all and the dignitaries. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, I get I get that. I don't like that, but I get it. 
But this, this time, there is absolutely no sense apart from some play at Villa Park, play at, play at Nottingham Forest, play it because you don't need a big ground to play it. Yep, and having, having been to that ground, it's in the middle of nowhere, literally. Yeah. I mean, you'd expect the Apaches on, on the, on the yeah. hill coming, <laughs> coming down, you know, it's right in the middle of nowhere. But why would you play it? Why would you play it there anyway? When, when I mean, we, we had this conversation before where suddenly Budapest is now locked down and, and events, and we were saying, why are they playing in Budapest when the, the COVID cases there were, were, were probably worse than here? I, I mean, this, this is to me. You just go today, you just go, right, we're moving it to, to <laughs> somewhere here. Yeah. yeah it, I, it just beggars it, belief. I believe Wembley is, is off because of playoffs and things like that. As, as you say, Rob, you don't need a big ground. I mean, if, if straight away, I was speaking last night and, you know, off the top of my head, I, I thought Cardiff would be ideal. Yeah, Cardiff um, ideal, yeah. But, but you know, if, if that's just somebody in a pub... Having a th having a think about it, you know, you don't have it, and, and as you say, you've come up with, you know, if you want it centrally, why not the Midlands? Why not um, the City Ground at Nottingham? Why not Villa Park? You're not telling me that one of these grounds, when you've only got to, you know, I don't know if there's going to be two thousand or whatever in, or five thousand. The whole thing is is you know when we're going to have the Euros as well in um, centred in England, it will be other other nations as well, but centred in and around sort of um, Britain. I just, I just can't understand that, you know. And, and in ten years' time, if people will look back and do you remember when there was a global pandemic, <laughs> two European, two Premier League teams went to Istanbul to Wait, play. Um, can I, can I just, respect. can I, I've got to, I've got to ask a footballing one because it does fascinate me. I know, I know he's been absolutely hammered in the in the papers for laughing after the Chelsea game, but oh. uh, I, I, I think that's almost irrelevant to. to Please, guys, what has happened to Eden Hazard? Not just the other night. I mean, since a 90 million... I, I, I mean, I'm laughing my head off because it's another typical Real Madrid. Um, oh, let's get 90 million pounds on Eden Hazard. But what, what's gone on with... Apparently he turned up 5K overweight when he first rocked yeah, up. I just, when he first rocked up. But just, what's going... I know he's had injuries, but I, I just can't make sense of a guy who was such a you know, wonderful talent who's not done a tap. No, well, you, 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 you almost say C, G, Bale, close brackets, uh, <laughs> whether he hasn't fitted in. I remember when Hez Hazard in the last season went to Anfield and I always think that... Oh. Right. And he played Liverpool on his own and he was absolutely sensation in a good Chelsea team, not a great Chelsea team. And I just thought, wow. And obviously Real Madrid thought, wow. And then he turned up 5K and it's just taken so long and he just wasn't the same player. He just wasn't the same player on, but he also didn't have the, the sort of motivation as well. Uh, I, what his next is step is. Money? Is that enough? Is that enough money that says, oh, I've got enough money? Oh, but, you know, a guy like him, you'd, you'd expect him. And he's got a dream move to Real Madrid. You'd think, oh, I want to, you know, I want to win things. And he just looks like, you know, me mate round the corner just rocked up playing left wing. I don't, I don't know him. I don't know if John's ever uh, spoke to him or whether he what what motivates him and things like that. But you know, it, it's all, almost you know this is the I'm set up for life. Thank you. I'll you know, you know, five five k for a professional footballer is is a fair trek, and it's as if that's always been a shadow over him in his time, as well as injuries. But you know, we don't you know, we don't know what the Strength and condition and the physios are saying, but something is rotten in the state of of, of Hazard Land. Rico, can I just generalise because uh, Charlie's made some good points there, and, and uh, I agree with everything he said. J just generally, I'm I'm while well, I'm in a grumpy mood, I'm fed up of these players at the end of games hugging each other. You know, Real Madrid have just been embarrassed. They've gone out the Champions League. There's Adam Hazard. You know. Large in it with his ch former Chelsea mates, just not him. You know, you, you have a look. I know, I know it drives Roy Key mad, doesn't it? You know, they're hugging each other before they kick off and everything. And I think, well, I think we all know they're not bothered. Most of them are not bothered. They're well healed, they're multi millionaires. They don't care whether they win, lose, or draw. Now, not everybody. I mean, there are, you know, players who give everything. 
But generally speaking, I'm getting fed up of this as soon as the final whistle goes. It's all this, you know, talking like this, blah, 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 you know, arm, arm in arm, going off arm in arm. If, if I was uh, Zidane Zidane, and I got Eden Hazard, uh, you know, up against the wall. I mean, not that Zidane really shows much emotion either. But, you know, this is shocking Real Madrid out of the Champions League semi final. There's people. Oh, well, Rico, Rico, welcome to football 2021, mate. Yeah, exactly. And I don't like it, Rob. I don't like it. I'd well, rather, I'd, I'd rather I'd like bust ups. I, I like bust ups in the, in the, in the tunnel than. You know, the P pizza gate at Old Trafford, things like that, where people actually cared about losing a football match. I, I'm, with, I'm, t I'm totally with you. I'm, I, I, I mean, I, I, did a, I did a thing for, uh, for Soccer X a um, uh, week ago, and we were talking, you know, talking about the football for our Super League, and, and I, I said, do you think eventually people will get fed up with it? I know it sounds a bit of a... And, I said, you know, we, oh, I'd, I said I'd talk to you guys about the, the, the games. And I, the television companies done, have done an unbelievable job getting, getting mm -hmm. football, football on. But there's so much of it that you suddenly go, whereas you go even even a year ago, you go, oh, um, Leicester playing tonight. Leicester are playing Newcastle. Newcastle. Leicester playing, oh, Leicester playing Newcastle. Whereas I'm going, really? You know, it's, I, I, that's just me. Maybe it's just me, but no. there's too much. It, there's a, never mind your point, there's a World Club Championship, an expanded World Club Championship. There's an expanded Champions League. Now, you either go with it and go, I'll buy into this, and, and or, or you, you, you're a bit like me and go, well, I'd rather go and watch Crawley. I, I, I always think less is more, you know. I mean, how many times do you, do you watch your favourite rock artist? It may be once every two years, if, if you're lucky, and you, you can't wait, can you? You can't wait. But with football, it's it's saturation at the moment. It's there's too much. And it there. shows no kind of let up, though, does it? No, it's going to get worse, isn't it? Well, I mean, we, we've let you wafer off again because you know the the new Champions League format is crazy. And that hasn't been changed yet. There was all this fuss. Oh yeah, we're going to listen to people. Are they listening to people? Of course they're not. So this will carry on, and in the end, I'm afraid fans will vote with their feet and. Um, the, the days of uh, capacity crowds will, will disappear. Do you agree with that, Charlie? I'll, I'll miss it after the post Euros um, because I'm used to it. I'm used to wall to wall. I'm used to the ability of an even to sit down and think, right, plan. Uh, Hollyoaks, Emmerdale, <laughs> Corey, and then the football. And sometimes the six o'clock game. Is the, you know causes a slight friction in the McCann household because, <laughs> but I, I'll tell you what I'm, I'm looking forward to the Euros. I think that could be sensible. I am. Oh, I, I really am. And then on what let's say it's normally around about July the tenth. I'll be, and then the fixtures will come out for the next season. And 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 sorry, I. I, I there might be a bit of cricket. Sorry, sorry to go back to a football one because we are we lurching from Rico's and I'm, I'm all with him. I'm with him totally. But I'm going back to a football one. And we talked about the Euros the other day, fellas. And you were saying it's it's an even an even call. I just wonder if France would come in shorter if Karim Benzema was playing up front for them because yeah, he's getting older, but to me, he looks like he's getting better and better. What Thanks. a forward he is, by the way. I always, I always, Sorry, Charlie, go on. No, on, on that WhatsApp group, I think it was the, the first leg. I said to I, I said to you know, my friends and, and um, brothers, I said, you do know he can't get in the French team. And Giroud leads the line and he can't get in Chelsea's team. And he's arguably third choice striker now, or possible with Havertz, Werner, Abraham. It's possible that he's fourth choice for Chelsea. Yet Benzema, who to me... I couldn't be bothered how old he is. Um, you know, he, he, you're not telling me that he isn't the best striker uh, for France, but, but Giroud has won World Cups with them and, and you know, he's let, staying loyal. I, I don't even know if Benzema's in the squad. And wh whatever. Benzema's, Benzema's out of the squad because of non-footballing reasons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fine. I think we can safely say, which was, which was the most, I still don't understand the case. It involves Balbuena, doesn't it? And all kinds of shenanigans, apparently, allegedly. But Fine. I mean, Aaron Benzema up, up front for France, I think changes the whole complexion of the Euros. I must admit, every year I look at Real Madrid, so it must be Benzema's last season. It must be last season. You know, he's, he's this, he's that. 
as you two have just alluded to, he's playing the best football of his career at the moment. And by the way, we've talked about him before. How good was Cavani last night? You know, similar. He, he, was, he was outstanding last night. But surely Sergio Ramos was, was Chelsea's best player the other night. I mean, I was like, <laughs> couldn't believe they did. Nobody picked up on the fact going, I, if I'd have been Thomas Tuchel, I'd go, please let Sergio Ramos play. Please let him play. Oh, he's playing. That'll do. Thank you. Good night. He was, wasn't fit, was he? Could I? <laughs> no. No. It was incredible. He looked like Eden Hazard. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be interesting to interesting to see where he plays next year, because um, surely they will get rid of him. Um, Real Madrid. Who's, would, who's that, Charlie? Sergio Who, Ramos. Is he not? Oh, I, sorry, I, th- I believe Sergio. No, now he's um, he's been offered a, another one year contract. Oh, has he? Sorry, right. Okay. He wants he wants two years, and th- that's what I thought that, that they yeah. were right. Okay, and they wouldn't budge, and so somewhere in the Premier League would offer him two years and things like that. Can and I? Can I just? Can I just throw in a, I was going to text you because I don't understand betting in any way, shape or form. But I was wondering if you could get in running a bet on how many PSG players were going to get sent off. Um, oh, in, in, and if, if you could pinpoint Verratti and go, I want to put my mortgage on Verratti. Get so, because they are, a, I don't care what anybody says, they are a very, very difficult team to like, PSG. Isn't, isn't that weird? Isn't that weird, Rob? I, I back three. I often do this to be first... Um, uh, the first person booked, and I backed Verratti um, and a Herrera for Manchester United, who was the first person booked, and one of the City players, I can't remember, was Ronaldinho, um, Fernandinho. Fernandinho. Uh, um, I think once I'd seen the teams, but of course he came in for N'Golo Kante uh, and a Herrera, and sorry, I used to think, I used to have, laugh at people. Yeah, right, again. Again. Not, get, not get booked every game for Manchester United. Um, so you you can, Verratti can play. Jesus, he can play. But Ander Herrera, well, sorry, towards the end of his Manchester United, he had a sort of an Indian summer. I thought he was a complete journeyman. Uh, and then he played well. Surprise, surprise, playing for his move again to Paris. Got there, and of course he's he's been found out. He's, he's a pretty ordinary footballer. They're, they're, they're a team of they're a team of psychopaths, aren't they? Let, let's be fair. <laughs> Yeah, they've got a sense of entitlement, don't they? That they don't yeah. like losing. They're not used no. to losing, but no, they, they're very difficult to like. I find them very, very difficult. difficult to like. Very on, difficult. On, the, on the betting front, can I just say that Mrs. R came up trumps yesterday at Chester. Oh, good old Danny Norton, love is golden. Forty. Um, I wonder. I wonder what's that. that. <laughs> we had a steward's inquiry as well, so we're sweating for half an hour. Ah, you, should, you normally get paid first past the post these days, um, John. You you may not be uh, well aware of it. Online, most of the online bookmakers pay first past the post, and of course would pay. Oh, the... Yes, yeah. If I yeah. wasn't aware of that, Charlie. <laughs> no. Listen, unless, unless you're gold. betting on the exchanges, you, you're norm, you're likely to get first past the post. Love right. is good. Right. very very good for you, Rico. That listen, let's. let's <laughs> I just... I just want to tip because we, we 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 great stuff. Honestly, I'm loving it. Here we go. It, tip our hat time. Um, we've got to tip our hat to, to Leicester. I think they need eight points from four games, Champions League. I thought West Ham were absolutely. I thought it wasn't a David Moyes team again. It was against Burnley, and, and you know, difficult away at tough. I, I really enjoyed watching West Ham the other night. I've got to say there was one move started in the right back position. If Ben Rama had put it in, it would have been goal of the season. Wouldn't it? I don't know, I don't know if Charlie's going to agree to this, but what's the common denominator? For me, it's two very good managers. Uh, David Moyes. Do, do we get a thumbs up for David Moyes? Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. And uh, Brendan Rodgers. Absolutely fantastic. Two managers, uh, uh, you know, really, really doing it. And if I was Arsenal, get Brendan Rodgers. Safe. You're safe as houses. Tottenham as well. Um, and David Moyes done a fantastic job. Charlie? Charlie, oh, I, I, I would... I would all, oh, David Moyes, apart from his last season at, at Everton, when I, I think him not signing a contract and then, of course, he getting more money, uh, Everton not when he knew he was going to Manchester United. That, but that, that's as, uh, with an Everton hat on. Very, very good. Very, very good David Moyes. Um, I would also say as well, the Renaissance in, in Burnley in the last two months 
you know, they came to Goodison and we were, you know, I was talking to a Burnley support team and we think it were all nil-nil and they wiped the floor with Everton. Mm. And then they scored three goals and a half as, or whatever and they were, um, Chris Wood got a hat-trick um, as well. Sorry, they, they as well, I think. And, and again, whether Sean Dyche is, is now saying to the, uh, the executive of Crystal Palace, look, I, I, we can play football as well. You know, my, I dominantly want to keep Burnley Football Club in the Premier League, but once I've achieved that, bang. Because honestly, they paid their part as well. But I would say that uh, that Claret's game three months ago wouldn't have sort of raised you, wouldn't have. It was a terrific game. It yeah, was it was. Rico, what's, what's the manager situation, merry-go-round? Suddenly Graham Potter, who I thought of Brighton was under the cost. Now Paul Barber says, oh, he's going, he's going absolutely nowhere. Um, Graham Potter's been mentioned for, for Spurs. Sean Dyche has got to come in, in into to a mix for somebody, surely. What, what, what's the latest? What do we know? Well, as you know, I know Sean pretty well. And um, I think he's done as much as he can at Burnley. Mm. I think it'd be good for both parties if he moved on to a Crystal Palace. I mean, that would be fantastic for him. I think he would take that job. And also, you know, it freshens up things at Burnley because he's been there, what, eight and a half years now. And I think familiarity sometimes breeds contempt. Yeah. Not seen it yet, but it, it could do. So I think that would be good. I like Graham Potter. I think he's done a, a, an OK job at Brighton. But um, I think you can ignore that. I don't think he's on the t- Tottenham's shortlist. Um, that's going to be interesting, Tottenham, because one or two that they fancy, um, they're not going to get. Um, I still, I still don't think the Brenda Rogers interest is over yet. I know mm-hmm. Brenda's been saying, "Yeah, I want to stay," which he's got to. Be interesting if Tottenham haven't uh, got anybody in situ at the end of the season, whether that could that could run on. Yeah, there's going to be uh, obviously a few changes 